Hello everyone, Beata here and welcome back to Fibers and Fabrics Season 2. Today we are looking at microplastic waste and specifically microplastic waste within the textile industry. Microplastics are very small pieces of plastic, almost not even visible to the eye, that pollute our environment. In the 1930s, plastic became a common household item with the first telephone entering the market made out of plastic. In 1938, we had the very first nylon toothbrush and by the 1950s, it was found in toys and in textiles. In 1969, Neil Armstrong planted the first nylon flag on the moon. And by 1973, the very first mobile phone by Motorola was made out of plastic. Plastics only became mainstream in the 1960s. At that point in time, it was revolutionary and it changed so many industries, making lots of goods much more affordable to many consumers. Plastic made things lighter and made things cheaper for so many industries. Therefore, a lot of people started consuming things that they could probably never afford before. And because of that, plastic could be seen in almost every single industry, including the textile industry. When synthetic fibers entered the textile industry, it made clothes much cheaper and easier for lots of people to consume much more of or more frequently at least. As you can imagine, clothing is one of the items that we use that gets washed the most. In order to understand microplastic waste, we first have to talk about the breakdown of any material when going through water as well as friction. I assume that most of you have seen the breakdown of a plastic container going through the wash for many, many months or even years. After a while, a brand new container might start looking a little bit dull, even scratched and less transparent than what it used to be. All of those mini scratches and all of the times that it was washed, micro pieces of that plastic broke down and went into the water supply. It's because of the hot water and the friction. And the exact same thing happens with clothing. Washing any type of garment micro pieces of that garment will break off and go into the water supply. That is why a t-shirt that was once brand new and, and almost a type of thicker material can become see-through and thinner. The same happens with tight-fitting pants, especially around the bum and thigh area where you sit a lot, there's a lot of friction happening in combination with washing it. Those fibers break down whether they are synthetic or natural or a blend of the two micro pieces will break off and go into the water supply. The issue comes in when it is a synthetic fiber, which is a type of plastic, and therefore micro pieces of plastic enter the water supply and becomes part of the water waste when washing a synthetic textile. With increasing conversations around sustainability and sustainable wardrobes and sustainable fashion, we can see the conversation of microplastic waste quite often. The only thing that I would like to add to that is also saying if we really care about our microplastic waste with regards to textiles, we should also care about our plastic use in other parts of our lives. As mentioned in my greenwashing episode, Every time we have a chance of making a more sustainable choice, we should do that. I might consider buying a handbag made out of recycled nylon, for instance, because that is something that I won't wash as regularly or maybe even at all, therefore not contributing to the plastic and microplastic waste and rather repurposing some of the nylon that already exists into a handbag that I could wear for a longer period of time because nylon is so durable. 
In the synthetic textile episode of this season, I spoke about all of the positives and pros that synthetic fibers have for designers as well as consumers. And with that being said, in that episode, I am still consuming some parts of synthetic fibers and will probably continue to do so, but it will be in a much, much lesser form. For instance, only including 5 to 7% of synthetic textiles in a blend with other natural fibers. That way, I am decreasing my microplastic waste tremendously. And I encourage you to do the same. Why are microplastics bad? It is likely that ingesting microplastics could further expose us to chemicals found in some plastics that are known to be harmful. These chemicals have been linked to a variety of health problems, including reproductive harm and obesity, plus issues such as organ problems and developmental delays in children. We have to remember that these microplastics get consumed by our marine life. And even if the larger fish don't consume the microplastics themselves, they consume the smaller fish that may have eaten those microplastic pieces. We as humans could be eating the fish, which also means that we are getting the micro pieces of plastic through the fish or the food that we are consuming. I'm very interested to see what happens in the future with regards to microplastic waste in our oceans and how we can combat this. If you've already done quite a bit of research, please do share it with me. I'd love to read some more. I hope you found this video helpful and thank you so much for watching. Thanks everyone. Bye.